Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're looking at various exoplanets we've discovered over the years. In this video we're going to be talking about a new technique that was just developed for this one exoplanet that we discovered sort of by accident. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So this right here is a simulation created by Ian Webster that shows you various types of exoplanets, their sizes and their orbits in relation to our own solar system. As you can see, some objects are really big and really massive, some are really close to the parent star, some are hot and some are cold. Red means hot, blue means cold. But today we'll talk about this one specific planet known as Mascara 4b, also known as 8562ab. And this exoplanet was discovered not so long ago, only a few weeks ago, in late 2019. And it was discovered using a completely new but very interesting technique that we've never actually used before. Before I explain it to you, here are the five major techniques that we often use to find exoplanets. This is how we've discovered pretty much most of the planets outside of our own solar system. And as you can see, the direct um, observation of a radial velocity or by seeing a planet transit in front of the star are the two major methods. So this one here uses the wobbling of the star um, as a planet moves around it. Usually this is a very massive planet. And here we can actually see the changing of the actual color of the star. So the star's color will turn either red shifted or blue shifted. So a little bit more red or a little bit more blue depending on the location of the planet. The second method is a little bit easier because this is just a planet uh, passing in front of the star and us seeing the actual shadow in the observation of the starlight. And both of these methods were very successful and will definitely be responsible for the major discoveries. But there is at least one method that we've never used and it was just sort of developed and discovered in this particular study. For this uh, experiment or for this study, the scientists actually used an extremely cheap to create, um, I guess you can call it a telescope, but it's really this, a bunch of cameras together. And they're placed in both southern and northern hemisphere, so technically covering the entire night sky. But they're only able to detect light from really uh, massive and really large stars. So their goal is to actually look at stars we normally don't look at. For example, A-type or O-type stars. And of course B-type as well. So these three types, um, these cameras are really good at taking a look at and also um, by taking really quick exposures the scientists can then look at their light and collect the data from each of these stars. And by the way our star, the sun, is somewhere right here. This is the G-type. And the reason this experiment and this particular uh, device is called Mascara and the planet is known as Mascara 4b is because Mascara is actually an abbreviation or a shortening of the uh, phrase multi-site all-sky camera. And this is a very, very easy to create, very flexible and mobile uh, device that can then be relocated anywhere in the world. The project only started in 2017 and since then it already discovered at least four different exoplanets. And uh, this one here is the most unusual because of the way it was found. So interestingly, the Mascara project is actually uh, focusing on stars we would never really be looking at either way. They're just stars that are not really interesting because they're too massive and too hot. But also because it's relatively difficult to look at those stars with other telescopes because they're just way, way too bright. So it's a very interesting project and I'm looking forward to more planets that it discovers. But what exactly and how exactly did this new planet was discovered? Well, first of all, they were looking at a star known as Mascara 4, an A-type star that's about uh, 1.8 masses of the sun and that has about double the temperature. Now, this is actually our sun and I wanted to show you how this particular star is different. Our sun, as you can see, um, is rotating and its shape is relatively spherical. However, if our sun was spinning a lot faster, just like Mascara 4, it would then start changing its shape and start uh, becoming a little bit more uh, oblong like you see right here or even more so 
it would basically look like a kind of a disc or, well, technically a potato. And these potato-shaped stars are relatively common, and I've talked about one of them a few years ago when I've talked about one of the fastest spinning stars, VFTS-102. This is one of the older videos, and you can find it on the channel by looking up the name. And because this star is fast spinning and because its shape is different, in the middle here on the equator, it actually has a little bit more material than it does in the polar regions. And because of that, there's also a little bit um, less density, a little bit less pressure, and thus a little bit less temperature. So its color here and its temperature here is lower than it is in the polar regions. And because of this, when we're looking at the star, we can technically tell apart certain regions and we can even calculate the way that it spins by looking at these different shapes. But what happens if a planet passes in front of the star? Well, it just so happens that around this uh, Mascara 4 star, we've discovered that there is a planet that passes in this way. Essentially, it first covers the hotter spots, then it covers the cooler spots, and then it covers the hotter spots again. And this happens pretty frequently, every 2.82 days. So when the scientists were looking at the star, they discovered that this uh, repetitive pattern of hot, cooler, hot, hot, cooler, hot, was repeated over and over, as if something was moving around the star. And using this technique, they were able to exactly and precisely calculate the mass, the size, and other parameters of this planet. And so now we know that it's about 3.1 masses of Jupiter, its radius is about 1.5 masses of Jupiter, and its orbital period and also its distance from the parent star are all here. So it's essentially what you would call a hot Jupiter. And these are exactly the types of exoplanets that Mascara project is aiming to find. Now we can try to recreate the system um, just so we can visualize this. And the closest A-type star to us is this. This is Sirius A, and it's also a very, very bright star. We haven't really found any planets around it yet, but maybe Mascara project will be able to do so. And the system looks something like this. So there's that star, there's this planet that's orbiting around the star, and all of this takes about 2.8 days uh, to kind of move around once. The temperatures here are shown around 2500 degrees Celsius for the planet, and using the new Universe Sandbox, we can even take a look at this planet's predicted surface temperature. And here, because we believe that this is a tidally locked object, it's basically always facing with this hot side that's about uh, 3700 degrees Celsius uh, toward its star. And then, as you can see, it forms this eye like shape. And then the dark side is still pretty hot. The dark side here is about 1000 degrees Celsius. So that's kind of what we believe the uh, planet might have on its surface. And obviously one day this planet will probably collide with a star and first create unusual beautiful rings around it. And the thing is, um, there's a lot of mystery here, specifically about the way that this planet orbits. It has an, a very unusual retrograde orbit. Basically it orbits in the opposite direction. And uh, from our solar system, the only way we could explain this, and we actually have tried to explain this, is by having another really massive object somewhere else in the system causing this uh, planet to actually have this orbit. A good example of what happens in our own solar system is that we've actually used the hypothetical Planet 9 to explain and to mathematically um, prove how some of the objects in our solar system, specifically asteroids, have acquired an, a retrograde orbit. They have either an orbit that's basically 90 degrees or the orbit that goes completely in the opposite direction of everything else. A typical massive object like Planet 9 could definitely cause this, and this is one of the existing proofs of this object's existence, even though we haven't seen it yet. But for this planet to acquire such an orbit, the object in this star system has to be extremely massive, possibly like a brown dwarf, basically a failed star. And it has to be somewhere in the system, and maybe we'll find it one day. For now, we can't really explain how this planet acquired such an unusual orbit. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that because of the discovery of this planet, we now have created this new method of detection where we're basically looking at planet like this. And we're seeing the temperature of the actual star changing. And this technique currently has a name, um, gravity darkening. It's a pretty cool name. It even already has its own Wikipedia page with a brief explanation. And it uses the uh, really massive star known as Akernar as an explanation to how this technique works. 
But unfortunately, that is all we know right now. So we've discovered this really cool planet, we've discovered it using a technique we've never used before. It's a really original, really creative technique. It's known as gravity darkening, it has a cool name. But the origin of the planet is hard to explain and we're not sure what other planets we'll discover with the uh, Mascara project. We've already discovered four in the last two years, but I'm sure once we learn how to analyze the data a little bit better, we'll find even more. But until we find more planets that are unusual or are interesting in general, that's it. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.